Roots of Multiplicity. So the best way to introduce this is by probably looking at an example. And let's say we have a function p of x equaling x minus 2, all the power of 4, x minus 3 squared, and x minus 9. Now, when we talk about roots of multiplicity, we're talking about the roots of a polynomial and what their, what their power is. So, in this case, the root of 2 would have multiplicity of 4, because its power is 4. The root 3 would have multiplicity of 2, and the root 9 would have multiplicity of 1. But we can, yeah, we're going to look further more into this, into this now. So let's, let's try and generalize this a little bit. So let's say we had some polynomial p of x, and it was in the form where we had x minus alpha, where alpha is a root, to some power n multiplied by the rest of the polynomial, let's just say it's q of x. And if we differentiated this, we'd have p dash of x equaling, well, this is a product, so we'd have to use the product rule because they're both in terms of x. So we'd have the, we'd have the product, yeah, we're using the product rule, so we're going the derivative of the first term, which would just be n x minus alpha to the n minus one times the second term, which is just q of x, plus the derivative of the second term, which we can just write as q dash of x, times our second term. And here we can actually factorize out an x minus alpha to the power of n, n minus one. And that's gonna leave us with n times q of x, plus q dash of x. And when we pull out an x minus alpha all to the power of n minus one, we're just left with an x minus alpha here to the one. Because if you think about it, when we add the power of one and n minus one, that leaves us with the power of n. So it's the correct factorization. And then we can just rewrite this as x minus alpha to the n minus one of some new polynomial r of x, because everything is in terms of x. And this is what our p dash of x equals. And why is this important? Well, we can see that we have our x in our original polynomial, we have our x minus alpha to the n, and in our derivative of the polynomial, we have our x minus alpha to the n minus one. So what that means is every time we derive the polynomial, the root has a multiplicity of one lower than what it was in the original polynomial. So going back on our first example, just looking at the root two having a multiplicity of four, that means in p dash of x, root two would have multiplicity of three, p double dash x, the root two would have multiplicity of two, and in p triple dash of x, root two would have multiplicity one. So let's look at an example of how we can use this to our advantage. So let's have a question solve x to the four plus x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0 um, given it has a root of multiplicity multiplicity of 3 so you an a root of multiplicity of 3 and since it's an equation with power of four and it has a root of multiplicity of three, um, we know it's only gonna have one other root. So 
So it's something to keep in mind. So the first thing we can do is we'll let p of x equal x to the 4 plus x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. And we're going to derive this twice. So we're going to find p dash of x, which is just going to be 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 5. And p double dash x is going to be 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. And since we know we have a, a root multiplicity of 3, that means in the second derivative, if we can find a root in the second derivative, it'll also be a root in the original function. So now we can just go ahead and make this equal to 0 to find the root. So we can divide everything by 6. And we just have to solve this quadratic equation. So because it's 2x squared, we'll say 2x, 2x, 1, 2. And we'll times the 2 and the minus 1 and give us minus 2. So we're looking for something that multiplies to minus 2 and adds up to 1. So it's just going to be positive 2 and negative 1. We'll factorize out the 2. So we're going to get x plus 1. 2x minus 1 all over 2 equals 0. And we know that x is going to have to be equal to minus 1 or a half. We know they're the, they're the roots of the second derivative. And one of these roots is going to have a multiplicity of 3. To be sure which one it is, we can actually, we could either test, we could test these values into the original polynomial and see which one of them gives us zero, or we could recognize that since this is a monic polynomial, uh, it can't be this fractional, can't be this fractional root. That's one way to think about it. So we can rule out this answer here. So the root of multiplicity 3 has to be x equals minus 1. And that means that p of x can now be expressed as x plus 1 cubed. But we know there's another, we know there's another root involved. So we can say it's x minus alpha. Now, what we can do is we can use our sum and product of roots of a quartic. And we can use the fact that alpha, beta, gamma, delta equals E over A. Because we know three of the roots are negative 1. So it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times our other root alpha is going to equal to e on a, so we're going to get minus 2 over 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, so we've got negative alpha equals negative 2, so alpha has to equal to 2. So we have our other root, so now we can say p of x has to be x plus 1 cubed, x minus our other root, which is 2, so therefore to solve it, we know x is equal to minus 1 and 2.